duck came to Edward State. It's not fair, he complained. Diesel has made the fat controller and all the engines think I'm horrid. Edward smiled. Oh, I know you aren't, he said. And so does the fat controller. You wait and see. Duck felt happier with Edward. He helped him with his trucks and coaches, and sometimes helped foreign engines by pushing their trains up the hill. But Gordon, Henry and James never spoke to him at all. One day, he pushed behind a goods train and helped it to the top. Beep, beep, goodbye, he called, and rolled gently over the crossing to the other line. Duck loved coasting down the hill, running easily with the wind whistling past. He hummed a little tune. That sounds like a guard's whistle, he thought. But we haven't a guard. His driver heard it too and looked back. Hurry, duck, hurry, he called urgently. There's been a breakaway. Some trucks are chasing us. There were 20 heavily loaded trucks. Hoorah, 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 they laughed. We've broken away, we've broken away, we've broken away. And before the signalman could change the points, they followed Duck onto the down line. Chase him, bump him, throw him off the rails, they yelled, and hurtled after Duck, bumping and swaying with ever-increasing speed. Now what? asked the fireman. As fast as we can, said the driver grimly. Then they'll catch us gradually. They raced through Edward Station, whistling furiously, but the trucks caught them with a shuddering jar. The fireman climbed back, and the van brakes came on with a scream. Braking carefully, the driver was gaining control. Another clear mile, and we'll do it, he said. They swept round a bend. Oh, glory, look at that. A passenger train was just pulling out on their line from the station ahead. The driver leapt to his reverser, hard over, full steam, whistle. It's up to you now, Duck, he said. Duck put every ounce of weight and steam against the trucks. They felt his strength. On, on, they yelled, but Duck was holding them now. I must stop them. I must. The station came nearer and nearer. The last coach cleared the platform. It's too late. Duck groaned and shut his eyes. He felt a sudden swerve and slid, shuddering and groaning, along a siding. A barber had set up shop in a wooden shed in the yard. He was shaving a customer. There was a sliding, groaning crash, and part of the wall caved in. The customer jumped nervously, but the barber held him down. It's only an engine, he said calmly, and went on lathering. Beg pardon, sir, gasped Duck. E excuse my intrusion. No, I won't, said the barber crossly. You've flattened my customers and spoilt my new paint. I'll teach you and he lathered Duck's face all over. Poor Duck. They were pulling the trucks away when the fat controller arrived. The barber was telling the workman what he thought. I do not like engines popping through my walls, he fumed. They disturb my customers. I appreciate your feelings, said the fat controller, and will gladly repair the damage. But you must know that this engine and his crew have prevented a serious accident. You and many others might have been badly hurt. The fat controller paused impressively. It was a very close shave, he said. Oh, said the barber. Oh, excuse me. He ran into his shop, fetched a basin of water, and washed Duck's face. I'm sorry, Duck, he said. I didn't know you were being a brave engine. That's all right, sir, said Duck. I didn't know that either. You were very brave indeed, said the fat controller kindly. I'm proud of you. I shall tell City of Truro about you next time he comes. Oh, sir. Duck felt happier than he had been for weeks. And now, said the fat controller, when you are mended, you are coming home. Home, sir? Do you mean the yard? Of course. But, sir, they don't like me. They like Diesel. Not now, the fat controller smiled. I never believed Diesel, so I sent him packing. The engines are sorry and want you back. So, when a few days later, 
He came home shining with new paint. There was a really rousing welcome for Duck, the great western engine.